you're listening to Rootbound, a podcast about plants for when you're stuck inside. Spruce up your life with Spruce, the sponsor of this week's episode of Rootbound. Whether you need wood, the fresh taste of spruce tips, or a source of artificial vanilla, Spruce is the tree for you. Vanilla? That can't be right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for listening to this episode of Rootbound. I host this show. My name is Steve. Rootbound, if you didn't know, is the podcast about plants for when you're stuck inside, and each week... I invite a guest who joins me on the show to share with us all about a plant that means something to them, and then I share with a guest about a plant that means something to me, and through this process we can all learn more about plants and learn more about each other. Regular listeners will know that that sound means that this is a special episode where we're only going to be talking about one plant, and that's because the guest on today's show chose a plant that's on my secret list of plants. And the plant we're going to talk about today is the black walnut. And there's one thing that we didn't end up talking about in the show that I do like to cover in a lot of my episodes. As the audience will know, I love the etymology of the names of things. And so let's quickly talk about the etymology of black walnut and walnut in general, and then we'll meet our guest. So the scientific name of the black walnut, the the walnut we're going to be talking about today is Juglans nigra. And nigra is simple. That's just Latin for black, black walnut. Um, and Juglans is interesting. Uh, from what I understand, the J-U in Juglans is a reference to Jupiter, the king of the gods. And glans means nut in Latin. So it's basically like the king of the nuts is the walnut, which um, the walnut regia, which is a walnut from Europe, um, I think was a pretty awesome nut for for the folks over there. And interestingly, we all call the walnut that most of us eat uh, the English walnut. That's a pretty common name for it. But the word walnut apparently comes from an old English word, which is something like walnut. But that word wall comes from a word that literally means foreign or maybe from Gaul. Um, so a it's a foreign nut because the nut was actually imported by the Romans, from what I understand. So walnut means for nut. I thought that was pretty interesting. So yeah, that's the etymology of walnut and the scientific name, Juglans nigra. And with that, let's meet our guest. Hi, Ashlyn. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Rootbound. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me. Do you have a plant to share with us today? I do. My plant is black walnut. Okay, I have to stop you right there and do something a little bit weird before we continue. Okay. I have to play this sound effect. And that uh, weird electronic bell means that this is a special episode and we're not going to talk about two plants. We're only going to talk about one plant. Because the black walnut is on my secret list of plants, of plants that are also meaningful to me. And so if a guest brings one up, we kind of like have a special episode. So... Yay! This one is interesting because I, I I actually have a limited knowledge about this, and I'll get into maybe why it's meaningful to me here. But I, I'm here to learn from you about black walnut, but also pepper in a little bit of maybe personal stuff. But yeah, it's it's a really cool plant. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it off to you now. Yeah, well that that's great. I'm glad that you also want to talk about it because there's so much to black walnut. Yeah. And you know, my husband and I, who you've had on your podcast before. We're both big, big plant lovers. And we're almost just like plant generalists. There's not a single plant that we learn about that we don't find something interesting about. Mm -hmm. So it's so hard to pick just one plant to talk about. But black walnut is an amazing one because, you know, when we go out into nature, the first thing we do is just take in the beauty. And black walnut is just a beautiful tree. Mm -hmm. You notice maybe the the bark in the winter time when you're trying to look for look for black walnut to tap for syrup which we'll get into <laughs> a little mm-hmm. bit or in the late autumn you might see the fruit and and it litters the ground and you might notice that before you even notice the tree because you're looking <laughs> at your feet while you walk and you might smell it because it has this pungent aroma but i like I like the smell. Um, so yeah, you it's a beautiful tree. But then for me, I think I take it a step further and I always ask 
kind of like what's the ethnobotanical significance of any plant and black walnut has so so much from food to medicine i mean not medicine uh for black walnut but uh food wood dye um and just so many different things mm -hmm. so um so yeah i just love black walnut for all of its many uses Awesome. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I feel like I was a late comer to this tree. I mean, a lot of my plant knowledge came later, but but I really only probably in the last five years really started to learn about it and what it is. And every time I'm like, I, I learn new stuff all the time. In fact, I learned a new thing today, which I'll share with you if you don't get to it, about one of its uses that I didn't think about. Um, but yeah, it's a super, super cool plant. So um, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, let's What's some fun facts and dazzling details about, about black walnut? Well... Probably the first thing that people think about is food, right? Because it's mm -hmm. a walnut and it is edible. Um, it's not something that you always find in the store like you do mm -hmm. the common walnut, which is Juglans regia, I believe. And that comes yeah. from Europe all the way to Asia. It has a, mm -hmm. a big native range. Um, and I think that walnut is more common in in the marketplace because it's easier to extract them than the black walnut but the black walnut is just as yummy and tasty and i don't know have you ever had like black walnut ice cream or seen it in other I forms i i've i've had the nuts before so when i learned about black walnut the first time i was like i gotta track some of these down because like they sound so cool and um uh, yeah, you can find them in the store, but it's tricky, I think. Um, and that leads to one, I don't know if you'll bring this up, but that one of the things I have written down is that there's essentially only one like commercial commercial seller of black walnuts. There's maybe a few smaller ones, but there's a big one that's called Hammond's Black Walnuts, and there you'll find them in packs and stuff. Um, but, but it's a pretty rare thing to find in the store because it's not, from my understanding, it's not really grown like orchard style like it's really just a wild tree right exactly yeah i i've been lucky to find black walnut in in grocery stores around me but yeah it can be really hit or miss um mm -hmm. but yeah no of course the nuts are really tasty and i've actually never tried to extracting the nut before because it's so difficult um but i think what the the food element that i love and that i do participate in almost every year um is tapping for for syrup and a lot that of people so cool. yeah a lot of people don't realize that there are other tree species beyond sugar maples that can be tapped mm -hmm. for syrup that's cool i you know i'm gonna tell you tell me more about the process um there was a guy in the farmer's market last year I, I haven't been in a while that was selling black walnut syrup and uh it was in these little tiny and he had bigger bottles but it's quite pricey i think it's a it's a more rare thing but i have a little bit and it is very good but yeah tell me about how do you do it like tell me about how, all the the syrup part. yeah well so a lot of people don't realize that when you tap a tree what's coming out is the sap and it's primarily water um, you have to boil it down to actually get that thick amber colored mm -hmm. syrup, you know, and it's always so fun, especially like with kids to be like, did you think it was going to come out like, like for directly on your pancakes, <laughs> just like syrup, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but black walnut, yeah, it, it's pretty comparable to sugar maple. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess I should say that I'm in East Tennessee and black walnut, is just so much more abundant than sugar maple. I'm a little too far south for sugar maple. Yeah. And on our farm, black walnut is probably our most uh, prolific tree species. Oh, wow. So it's it's kind of a no-brainer to just mm -hmm. go and tap. Uh, and really it's you know late winter, early spring when you do this. Um, it, you kind of want the temperatures to be a fluctuation where at night the temperatures get below freezing and then during the day it warms up. And it mm -hmm. kind of, you're participating in this like pressure system. Um, which is really interesting. Um, but it's so simple. You just get these little spiles, these little taps. You drill into the tree, just put it in. It doesn't hurt the tree. You remove them at the end of the season and it it's fine. Um, but then you just put a little uh, milk jug or bucket on the spile and it just tap, 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 just little drops of sap. Uh, and then 
just within a day, you can get anywhere from a little bit to like a whole gallon of, oh, wow. of sap. Um, but it does take about 40 gallons of sap to get one gallon of syrup. So yeah, wow. it's a lot um, okay. that needs to, that's, to be collected. That's actually, collected. you know, I've done, I have a silver maple in my yard and I've tapped it a, 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 a little bit and I've made my own syrup uh, twice. Um, I would have expected, I think it's about the same for my silver maple, about the ratio. And I think sugar maple is a little bit better. Uh, or, right, but yeah. I was expect I was expecting maybe the black walnut to be like a even bigger boil down because you don't hear about it as much. But that's not, that's not too bad for if you're talking to people who know about boiling down sugar. Exactly, <laughs> and I I believe the sugar content is almost the same as uh, sugar maple, oh, wow. but the sap flow is is um, I guess slower. I so see. from a productivity viewpoint, it's yeah, it's not going to be as I guess, commercially viable. I guess that's why we don't see it, you know, mm -hmm. like we do maple syrup. I'm not quite sure why. But to me, in a blind taste test, I actually like black walnut syrup over sugar maple. It's more chocolatey, it's nutty, and it's just more complex. Have, have you had it? You said that you saw it. I have it. a little bit of it. I have such a small amount of it. I've been very like... Um, I've been like rationing it. I need it, but it is really good. I, I do really like it. And I'm going to try to pay attention to, to the farmer's market more and, and pick some of that up. Cause yeah, it is, it is really cool and, and much more local like this, you know, where we are, I'm in, I'm in Alexandria, Virginia. We're also too far South for, um, sugar maple. Mostly there are a couple producers around here who are doing silver maple harvests, but this one guy, I guess you know, this guy has a decent chunk of forest and it's got a lot of black maple and he's starting to make the syrup or black walnut and he started to make the syrup which is pretty cool um and that taste is interesting too because going back to the taste of the the nut the nut is very different tasting than the walnut i feel like walnut like the walnut the, the european walnut the mm -hmm. one that everybody knows is is kind of bland particularly compared to the black walnut there's like a i don't know how can you describe the taste of the black walnut nut that that is true i yeah there's just like a there's just a more depth of flavor mm -hmm, to me mm -hmm. um and it's one of those things that like once you're familiar with the flavor you're like oh yeah that's definitely black walnut um but yeah the, and it really shows up in the syrup for me it, it's just so interesting how um there is this intense nuttiness which people you know you use that term to describe any sure. nut but there is mm -hmm. something there that is more intense than the european walnut that's very cool. Um, so maybe on to the reason why I wanted to talk about this plant with you. There's two reasons. Um, and it has to do with the nuts. And for, first of all, um, when you're saying you haven't actually tried to extract the nuts, I, I kind of tried, well, I've had straight from the ground black walnut one time. And it's because I went on a foraging walk here. There's a guy who does these foraging classes. And it was black walnut season. And he, he, you know, he took one and smashed it with his foot. And then he had some nut crackers. But even then, like getting the nut meat out is a lot of work. Yes. Um, and also, if you're if you're not doing it right, you'll get your hands stained, which I guess we'll probably talk about that aspect a little bit later. Um, but I tried it and it was really good. But um, that's when I started researching about the nuts. And I learned about, um, you know, the, the main company that you can buy them, this Hammonds company that I mentioned earlier. Um, they, to this day, and it, it, it is, I think, in general – one of the very few wild harvested commercial products in this country. Really? Right. Right. So it's it's very cool because it's not it's not farmed. And to this day, this company Hammonds just people can just bring the nuts to various collection points all over from like Missouri. I'm not quite sure if it gets down into Tennessee where you are, but this company has all these different partners that buy nuts that are just gathered from people. That's amazing. And that's their crop. That's so cool. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah. And and I think anywhere else you see them, they're all, if you ever see them, um, I think there's very few people have had luck, you know, growing a, you know, plantation style of black walnut. I think because they grow really slow. And I also think that they, um, they just have some other things about them that like uh, impact their goals. I don't think they like to grow close to each other, par maybe partially because of this um, one of the chemicals in them, juggalone, which is mm -hmm. in the in the roots, which can inhibit growth of other things. So like, yeah. Yeah, that's actually an interesting point because some people might 
associate black walnut with this trait, this mm -hmm. allelopathy, um, which is basically what you said that it produces a, a chemical or several chemicals that um, suppress the growth of other plants. And preparing for this, um, little chat about black walnut, I was like, you know, I really need to get the facts straight on that because in school we definitely learned about that trait of black walnut, but um, I haven't researched it in over 10 years. And when you actually look into it, um, it's a, it's mixed. When you mm -hmm. read studies, some people say that, yes, it, it does inhibit the growth of other plants, but then other things I read were like, no, it's a myth. It's kind of like a Mythbusters mm -hmm. thing. And I still don't have clarity on whether or not that is true or not. And I was reading a little bit about that too. And I saw some of the things too. Like one of them said that it actually like spurred the growth of conifers in mm -hmm. some cases. And I think, you know, this is, the, I don't, this is, I'm just spitballing here, but I think probably the more likely answer like a lot of things in nature is it's not one or the other it's kind of a blend and when you have a balanced forest it has its role to keep a mixed hardwood forest and mixed hardwood forest i imagine right are, are part of it's part of this like this harmony of a, of a natural forest and a natural mixed hardwood forest you don't have 40 black walnut trees right next to each other right they don't they don't do that Right, they they tend to like be more spaced out and stuff like that, and that might be part of the way that that works. I guess so that's just a theory. Yeah, well, it's definitely <laughs> complex, and mm -hmm. I would say just going out and observing it yourself, you know, is probably the mm -hmm. first step. And for me, like I said, we have so many um, mm -hmm. on the farm, and they grow. They love growing along the creek. You know, they like the mm -hmm. moist, wet slopes with still plenty of sun. And yeah, I mean, it doesn't keep the briars and all the other things from growing. It's not like there's this dead zone <laughs> like Mars mm -hmm. where nothing will go, grow around it. Um, and so that's why I would never encourage anybody to remove a black walnut if they were like, oh, well, it, I can't, you know, plant anything else. There, there are plants that will grow with black walnut. Um, and what's interesting to me, kind of being more like an ethnobotanist it's not so interesting, I guess, the, the technical side of that, but why do humans respond so much to mm -hmm. that fact? Mm -hmm. What is it about poisons or like the dark side of nature that people really latch on to? Even Pliny the Elder, I think I have a quote where he says, the shadow of walnut trees is poison to all plants within its compass. Interesting. And there's just this interesting like, human ref like um what's it called when you're i'm blanking uh yeah, projecting yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. projecting like these human like good and bad things mm -hmm. to nature and i just find it fascinating and, and i i'm just having coming up another theory about that now too which i think we see a lot at, you know it probably you know one of the things i did read is that it definitely like will negatively affect alfalfa and it probably has a larger impact on like various commercial like or like agricultural crops and and a lot of like you know if you're a farmer and it's not your crops aren't growing right because you're growing like a lot of the same crop and maybe that has more of an effect that might be why it's so ingrained and it's a little bit it reminds me i'm just thinking of it's a little bit like like wolves right like wolves are so hated by farmers because they they like impact their crop or their animals but wolves in nature are are not damaging right <laughs> But right. we've put that evil, evil like attitude to the wolf because of its impact on like our civilization, quote unquote. Yes, and our needs yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's so interesting. And, you know, for me, just looking at the little uh, patches that we have, I mean, they do grow. Um, there's parts of the farm where there are, there are so many in just a little wow. section. So, yeah, I don't know about how it regenerates. I mean, there. Are, I think it does want to scatter out, but mm -hmm. I also mm -hmm. see, it's not like the linden where, mm -hmm. you know, we have one big linden tree and then there's just none. <laughs> we just have mm -hmm. one. Uh, but black walnuts, they will grow side by side very easily. Okay, going back to the nuts thing. So I learned about them. I had one. I got kind of obsessed with them. This happened with me with a number of plants, right? I've, I get really into these plants that I feel like don't get enough 
uh, attention, right? Mm-hmm. Like this cool native food that is just everywhere. Like you like avoid stepping on it. So I got really into it, and then I had learned to recognize it. And uh, I was walking home from from the metro one day, and I looked down and I was like, "That's a black walnut." And I looked up, and I was like, "That's a black walnut." That's awesome. And so I had all these uh, intentions to. Then it was pretty late in the year, and and uh, I think you know squirrels had scattered them or whatever for for a lot. I was like, okay, next year, I'm gonna I'm gonna be ready, and I'm gonna like get a bunch of black walnuts. I'm gonna try harvesting them myself, and then they built an apartment building. <laughs> No, <laughs> and they cut no. it down. The, all the trees over there, <laughs> including that black walnut, which was pretty was was a bummer. So oh, I haven't no. done that yet. I gotta go find another. I know they're all over. I just gotta find the place you know that I can get to easily. Also, my wife and I just had a kid, so going out to the forest has been a little bit slowed down the last. Yeah, years, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be. I would love for you to try tapping it if you ever have access yeah. to one that you can tap because it is such. Um, an interesting way to interact with nature, right? Because I think obviously you love the idea of foraging and like the utility Mm -hmm. of plants. And um, tapping is just one of those things because it's like, people will say it's like, you're partaking in the lifeblood of the tree. It's like the, Mm -hmm. the blood of the tree. And beyond that, it's almost like, I can get all like really hippy dippy on you, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, it's please. like, it's more than just the tree, you know, it's like you're partaking in the whole little ecosystem, like the sunlight mm-hmm. turning into sugar and, and the roots uptaking the water and the nutrients and, and the microbes in the soil and that, that interconnectedness to, to other plants and the connect, the communication that happens. So when you really like start to reflect on what you're participating in, when you tap mm-hmm. and you uh, have the syrup it just I don't know it's a beautiful um, it's a beautiful thing to reflect on for sure I'm gonna keep an eye out I'm gonna have to check my my mom's got a little bit of like acreage and I wonder if there I haven't really I haven't seen one now that I think about it but may, I ha- maybe I haven't been looking and there's so, so many things about like trees or like sometimes you have to remember remember to look for what you're what you're interested in so i wonder it seems like the kind of place where there would be some black walnut so i'll, I'll i'm gonna i'm gonna try that maybe in the next uh like you know late winter early spring if i can find one um the, okay the last thing i have the sheriff's about why i chose it and that i think this is this is was something surprised me it was a bit more personal um about black walnuts and actually kind of a little bit of an echo of the story I just told you, but in like bigger scale. But I was, I was visiting my grandparents over, um, over Thanksgiving and I was talking to my grandpa and he told me, and I didn't know this, that my, I guess my great, great grandpa had this land in Georgia and the main way he made money was selling black walnuts. No. I mean, he was like, like back the then, nut like, or the timber? Yeah, he would gather the nuts. Oh, okay. He would gather the nuts and sell them. Maybe it wasn't the main way, but it was a, it was a, a supplemental to farming, right? It was a pretty subsist- subsistence lifestyle, but that was like a cash crop on this farm. And then a little bit how I lost my tree to an apartment. Apparently, uh, he fell behind on his taxes, and then the government seized the land, and, <gasps> and he and uh, I think it's like a some kind of like park now, a Georgian like state park or something. Oh this, my this gosh! Territory where, but anyway, uh, uh, I didn't know that I had such a connection to black walnuts really until this year that it was like you know something that 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 was collected in my family and, and like sold for you know sub- subsistence. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's an amazing familial connection. That's crazy. Oh um, man. Cool. So that yeah, that's that's the nuts. We've talked about the syrup. What what are the other uses for? black walnut well another fun one is um the dye or the pigment and of course you kind of hit on this about it staining and that's an, something else that people when they hear black walnut they might imme- immediately think the nuisance of it staining you know people whoop accidentally picked the the fruit up and and then immediately your hands <laughs> it like oxidizes and turns brown or black or maybe um it litters you know, a driveway and you run over the fruit and then it stains the concrete. Um, So for all, you know, those maybe negative ways that it can affect your life, I think it's awesome because people have used it as a dye or a pigment, um, especially 
the Native Americans, the early American settlers, it was a dye plant for mm. them. And I think I have read that it was even used as a hair dye. So like a black <laughs> hair dye, which would be uh, kind of fun to try out, you know. That would be if I start to go a little bit gray more, maybe I can, <laughs> get, can try that out. Uh, that's really yeah. interesting. Um, I haven't done any dyeing like on fabric or anything, but I have done um, black walnut ink. Oh, cool. And that was really fun. And I have so many jars of it because it's so, it, it made so much. And so I just kept canning and canning and canning. And now I have like ink for the rest of my life. <laughs> okay, let's talk about how did you, how did you make that ink? So simple. You're literally just, you know, gathering the fruit. And that's another point to make if people aren't familiar with black walnuts. We might say nut or fruit. And, and the way it's structured is you have the actual hard nut inside and then it's surrounded by a husk. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes you'll hear nut and fruit interchangeably, mm -hmm. but there are two different parts to it. Mm -hmm. And it's the husk that is kind of like you know, it's like tennis ball size almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, um, as it matures and it falls to the ground, it goes from green and, and then it starts turning brown and black. And if you touch it, yeah, that it will get mm -hmm. on your hands and your clothes and everything. But so you can harvest, collect those, those fruits and the husk and just throw it in a big pot of water and boil it and let it just sit for, for days if you'd like. And mm -hmm. that that deep brown, almost black coloring um, just transfers into the water. And then um, you can just jar it up and use it like that. Um, and yeah, so I've tried it just with like a little quill pen and it's it's really pretty. Is it is it uh, is it stay brown or how black does it get when you uh, when you write with it with it? With I would a... say it stays a deep brown. Cool. And pro it probably, if you were to maybe um, reduce the water, work with the ratios, you could probably mm. manipulate the intensity. That's super cool. And and that and those like jars just kind of the last as well. Yeah, I've I've checked on them, and they're still good. No mold or anything. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So if there's Amazing. ever you know like an ink shortage, <laughs> <laughs> I have plenty. I'll send yeah, you some. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be great. I love that. Um, Okay, let's talk about. Uh, let's. I don't know how much you know about this part, but I do know that the wood is a really amazing, beautiful wood. Yes, yes, for sure. That is another uh, utility, amazing utility mm -hmm. of black walnut. It's highly prized for its wood. In fact, I don't know the numbers, but if you were to plant an acre of it, you probably would make more money for the timber than you would mm. for syrup production or even nut production. Mm -hmm. um, it's just this beautiful dark color and it's super easy to split without splintering. Um, and it's really straight grained. So it has just all the amazing qualities that you would want um, you know, for woodworking. And um, my husband, he would say that he's an amateur woodworker, but I think he's amazing. Mm. And um, he's made me little homemade gifts before using black walnut. So he's made me um, a chessboard and wow. a cutting board, and he'll use oh. oak as well. So you have that uh. contrast of color between black walnut and like a light, you know, maple or oak. And so imagine just like a beautiful chessboard or a multicolored cutting board. And so yeah, I just I I love those pieces so much. That's so cool. Yeah, it's I I really love the look of the wood and I've seen some like uh really cool antique furniture too and it just still it just like looks very beautiful and it's very like long lived wood yes yeah, it's, it's very cool yeah it's um, beautiful one thing that i think we maybe didn't talk about and maybe there's a little bit to say about this is um it does have i think pretty interesting leaves right uh, compared to a lot of trees you would see maybe you can describe the leaves yeah the leaves it's interesting there's 
I tend to use the bark and the fruit as my identifiers. It's things that I've just really attached onto because the leaves are like long compound leaves with a bunch of leaflets and they don't necessarily look exactly the same <laughs> all the time. The leaflets can vary. So it's one of those things that I don't even really try to ID the leaves too much because I'll get confused <laughs> with hickories and pecans and all that. Um, yeah, yeah. It does but, look a little bit like all those. Yeah. And then, and then if it's a seedling i've seen this too where i'm like we have a lot of tree of heaven here mm. which is you know the we talked about a much maligned invasive tree here but uh you know from a distance you might get confused between those two and so you want to be careful that you're not like uh going cutting down a bunch of black walnut that's sprout, <laughs> sprouting up instead of that but For yeah, sure. i think particularly i've uh, in, in the edge of some forests around here where the the tree of heaven is really starting to encroach but you might be in some black walnut habitat as well which is um which I, and i also on, on that note i guess that i i've only heard this i've not seen this i wonder if you've seen this do you have spotted lantern fly over there yet i just learned about that I, oh, so man. far i think we're okay but since we're in the nursery industry mm. um, my husband said you know we're, we might have to start getting inspected for that mm -hmm. so I, it's kind I, of mm. So, you know, that, that bug really loves Tree of Heaven. And, it, and what I've heard is that it needs Tree of Heaven as part of its life cycle. So, like, where Tree of Heaven is, the spotter and lanternfly will follow. But the spotter and lanternfly is damaging because it also likes... It's a pretty generalist as far as just regular feeding. And the biggest problem it had uh, and where it first became a problem was in the uh, grapes up in Pennsylvania because it likes... It likes plants that have a lot of turgor pressure and put out a lot of sap, which grapes can do that. But I've also heard um, other trees like walnut, is, uh, particularly the younger walnut, the spotted lanternfly, can be attracted to. And I haven't heard any like definite cases of like, oh, spotted, spotted lanternfly has killed this black walnut tree. But it is one of the species I've heard that could be at risk with the spread of this invasive bug. Yeah, I was I was sad to hear hear that honestly because when I I read yeah the species that it could target mm -hmm. I'm like oh my gosh that could like decimate our whole natural mm -hmm. you know woodland species but hopefully it doesn't come to that yeah it's, it's yeah it's it's a really uh, an interesting case to see this invasive thing really spread in real time like it's only really I forget the introduction it was not that long ago. Um, but like it's, it's kind of moving pretty quick. So I haven't had seen any in my neighborhood yet, but one of my neighbors apparently did. And so I, I'm, I'm really worried this spring that they're going to be everywhere mm. uh, because we do have a fair amount of tree of heaven. And then like New, New York last year was like, people were flipping out because they were like <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's like people, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, well, to your point about, you know, talking about the leaves and IDing and everything, another cool point about black walnut is if you, you break open a stem, it has a chambered pith. And it's almost like oh. honeycomb-like. And I think there's only oh. one other tree. I could be mistaken, so I'll have to fact check this. But I think like the butternut, I think, is the only mm -hmm. other one. Um, but anyway, so these are all good indicators in the wintertime when you do want to tap right you don't have the leaves uh, mm -hmm. so we look for that beautiful deeply ridged bark that's kind of like diamond or lattice shaped and then if you still aren't sure then break open a twig and look for those little chambers in in the oh, cool. center i'm gonna find that that's really neat what a good what a good tip <laughs> um do, do you have any other fun facts or dazzling details of black black walnut we haven't talked about yet well, yeah, there's one interesting one that kind of ties back in with um, Native American usage of it, um, and that's that it's been used as a fish poison. Uh, oh. Yeah. So uh, there apparently are plants that, you know, have chemicals in them that will chemically stun fish. So they could throw the fruit in the water, and mm. eventually the fruit, the the fish would rise to the top, would float to the top because they would be stunned mm -hmm. um, and have, I guess, like a toxic effect. And they could easily catch them that way. Um, and I thought that that's really interesting. And again, it's, you know, it goes back to this, like, is the plant, is, is black walnut good or not? You'd think mm -hmm. with 
this allelopathy and this fish poisoning quality that it wouldn't be safe to consume for humans. Mm -hmm. Yet we're totally mm -hmm. fine eating the nuts and, um, you know, having the syrup. So it's kind of interesting how it's both has this like toxic quality and also this edible quality. Yeah, that's a, a really great point about uh, about that aspect. And it's, it's kind of curious that, yeah, that, that it, yeah, we, we can eat it and it's, uh, it's not poisonous to us. Really, really kind of a, a complicated plant. Yeah, it is. So yeah, at the end of the day, just some of the utility is, is food, including nuts and syrup and the wood and um, the dye or the pigment and then fish poison. <laughs> so yeah, there's just a lot of tendrils of black walnut where, um, you know, looking at its story, it kind of reflects the, the human story, which is what I love about plants at the end of the day. Okay, I have one last use for you here that would okay. surprise me that I learned literally today. What about an industrial use for black walnut? Ooh. So apparently the same company that harvests the, or that they collect the black walnuts and they sell them and the company you can, you can find at Hammonds, they also, and it's, it's actually pretty cool because the sustainability of having a wild collected food crop that is sold, but then they also grind up the shells and sell them. And the quote on Wikipedia is, the walnut shells are often used as an abrasive in sandblasting or other circumstances where medium grit hardness is required. Oh, so that's amazing. So those shells, amazing. those really hard shells are used for various like industrial abrasive uses. Oh my gosh, yeah. So pretty much all parts of the tree can be used somehow. Yeah. Even the byproduct, I guess, of, of shelling the nuts out. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And a cool way to like, to have like a, you know, you're, they're selling the nuts, but they're also selling like this waste product. And it's yeah. Like, and it's something that is just, you know, collectible from the ground. And there's a really cool video on, on this company's website of showing like people collecting them. And yeah, so it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So if, if, if you're near, I'll, I'll send you a link to it. If you're near one of these collection points, you should collect some up and take them over and, you know, get, get a little cash. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. No, I I love that fact that you shared that it's still one of the few wild harvested products. You know, it's one of those things where we get food from all over the world. We're so globalized and, and it's a blessing. But I also think that it makes us not appreciate what we have in our own local <laughs> food. Like it's, a, it's part of our local food system. And it's kind of sad to me that someone could have the tree growing in their own backyard, but then go to the grocery store and not necessarily find it to, mm -hmm. to include in their diet. So um, yeah, I would love to see black walnut, whether it's the, the nuts or the syrup or anything, um, just become you know easier to, to access for all Americans, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. It would be really cool. Well, I'm, I'm very inspired by this episode. I'm going to maybe go up and have a little bit more of that syrup right now because that's the black walnut product that I still have here. Um, but I, 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 I was in this kick of buying them a couple of years ago, but I, I'm going to I gotta go buy some more because they're so so good. And yeah, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to find some and maybe maybe even, I don't know, work on trying to extract some myself. I guess that there, there's some videos you can watch online of people doing it. Um, For sure. In their backyard and like... Uh, there, it, it is a process, though. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You would want probably at least a couple of of trees to tap mm -hmm. just to to make it worth your while, because <laughs> you might Good find point. yourself uh, boiling boiling sap down, and coming out with a teaspoon, and that's yeah. that's no fun. <laughs> no, like I said, I, I have I have this uh, <laughs> silver maple in my backyard. It's one tree, and I made you know uh, eight ounces of syrup a couple of years ago from that tree. <laughs> but the other thing, I wonder if you've tried this, by the way. I'm, I'm, I felt like we were wrapping up, but I have one more question for you. No, no, go ahead. Uh, with the with the, the maple uh, the maple water, you know, when I tap the maple tree, one thing that I really love to do with it is to just use the sap straight from the tree and then make coffee with it. Have you ever done that? Oh, I have not. I mean, I've started to see in recent years maple water be, mm -hmm. you know like a coconut water kind mm -hmm. of thing mm -hmm. and i know that you can just like drink the sap and it, you'll still get like the good minerals and nutrients um you said it, you put it in your coffee though so what i will, i yeah it's really interesting because like if you just drink the water straight from the tree it it tastes like 
it doesn't taste very sweet the, the, for my tree anyway. Um, for sure, no, you don't like get much from it. Minorly, it's more just kind of tastes like a slightly more viscous water. I don't know; it's hard mm-hmm. to explain. explain. Is, the, is the is the black walnut the same? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But something kind of magical happens when so I'll make a French press coffee when I do it with uh, maple water because um, I don't want to filter um, through through paper. The the you know I don't want to lose any of that stuff. So with a with this the metal screen of a French press, um, but when you heat it up. And you just, I just, you, just, you know, and just make black coffee with a French press. It, you, it tastes sweeter. No way. Yeah, and I don't like super sweet coffee, so it's subtle. But it does, it does make the coffee different just from making it with that. And I've made tea as well, but I, coffee's my favorite thing to do with it. That's brilliant. I've never thought about that. And the the the, I guess the little alchemy that can happen when uh-huh. you when you use it in different ways like that. Okay, I'm gonna have to try that. Because I have a bunch, yeah. I have probably at least four gallons of sap in my fridge right now oh. that needs to be boiled down because it's that time of year. Um, that's that's cool. Do you do you? I did my boiling outside on on a wood fire. Is that how you do it, or how do you? What's your what's your process? Well, I'm a little more modern in that I have a propane burner. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, but that is part of like the fun ritual of early spring is just going out with my stainless steel pot and put it on the propane burner and just let the steam because you don't if you don't almost want to do it in the house because it's so much water evaporating um but it's fun to just yeah do it outside on a pretty sunny day and what's one other thing i know like i could just keep talking about this forever but um black walnut has more pectin compared to sugar maple and so when you boil it down, you can sometimes boil it so far that it turns to jelly. And I've had layers of jelly form. Um, so if that happens to you, don't be surprised. <laughs> wow, black walnut jelly. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. Oh, man, I want to try that. That sounds like a fun, fun, like premium product that could be at a farmer's market yeah <laughs> imagine you, how wonder... little syrup you get and then how little jelly you'll get from that but it's good <laughs> i wonder i wonder if um anyone's like nailed down that process or if it's just if you just boil it down to a certain level it it, it turns to jelly or is it like a yeah density thing or i don't know it's interesting yeah it's just the pectin the pectin mm-hmm. in it like you know how like yeah. fruit has natural pectin in it so at some point it'll start to congeal on you very cool. Oh, my okay. I had another another thought. Okay. Last thing. The there's a there what there's a a, a thing that some a bunch of people have been making on the internet which is like nuachino, which is like soaking young black walnuts in like a grain alcohol to, or like some kind of alcohol to make like a like a bitters drink or something. I've not tried it. Have you tried that? No, I haven't. And you know what? There's a, <laughs> we could just keep going. Know, so yeah. real quickly, yeah. there are yeah, there are other, you know, uh, people around the world and in particular cuisines from Italy, even to like the Caucasus, they'll use the walnut fruit, the immature fruit to make liqueur, like the nocino and then other things. And I did a three week ethnobotanical study in the Republic of Georgia, which mm. is, you know, right below Russia. And walnuts are a huge part of their cuisine. It's like a staple. And one of their things, um, which I think they took from the Arabic culture, um, but Ngozi's Marabas, and it's basically pickled and candied immature walnut. So instead of making a liqueur, they'll take the immature walnut fruit, peel it a little bit, and then either brine it, or I think the way I had it, it was candied. So they they put it in um, a sugar concentrate. Mm-hmm. and just let it sit over time and the green turns black and the syrup that it's sitting in turns black and they eat them like little like confit you know like little candies Whoa. that have been um yeah and they, they get kind of almost jewel like um so i tried that when i got back home with my black walnuts and it, it kind of worked but it was a little um, mealy. It's like the husk on our black walnuts a little more mealy than oh, the see. the European walnut. Interesting. I never heard of that one before. That's a new one. That's super cool. Um, yeah. There's there's so much that that's why black walnuts just a fun one to dive into. 
Well, I think that uh, just about wraps up this episode of, of Root Band. Uh, thank you, Ashlyn, for sharing with Black Wallow with me. Super cool tree. Thank you so much for letting me talk about it and nerd out with you. <laughs> There's a black walnut dying in my backyard. But you wouldn't know cause the leaves are green and the bark is so hard. There's a new building going up next door. It was delivered in boxes and slid into place. Four by four And I can't seem to throw away the phone From the time I thought I'd leave this home No, I can't seem to throw away the phone From the time I thought I'd leave this home And I'd play Trying to heal, but you know I have vision. Yeah, you know I have dreams. I know that it's hard, but somehow it seems I'm playing music everywhere. I use kitchen scissors to cut my hair. I'm playing. That song was Black Walnut by Maya Elise and The Good Dream. Listen to her wherever you listen to your music. Her new album, which is called Everything We Watered, very appropriate to a plant-based show, is available to listen to now. And uh, I'll put a link in the show notes. And with that, let's wrap up this episode of Rootbound. Thank you for listening. My guest on this episode of Rootbound was Ashlyn Morgan. Ashlyn is a botanist and culinary expert, and she's also one half of the East Tennessee plant nursery, Green Canvas Farms. There will be a link in the show notes. If you like Rootbound and you want to help support the show, visit rootboundpodcast.com slash support to find all the ways you can support the show, including supporting on Patreon. Rootbound is hosted by King of the Nuts, Steve Ellington. Music by Christian Kriegeskota. Fake ads by David Lonnie. Rootbound is a podcast about plants for when you're stuck inside, but if you can go outside, track down a black walnut and maybe make some syrup, or just gather the nuts, or even dye your hair. Yes, you can apparently make vanilla from spruce! Listen to episode 115. Who knew?